So uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is uh, François Jongler, and I'm working for uh, 12 years now for uh, an international IT company named Aris. And this talk focuses on offline mode for uh, progressive web apps and how the offline first design pattern can be implemented at very low cost, thanks to the association of PouchDB on one side and CouchDB on the other side. Indeed, when designing progressive web apps, uh, in general, developers share the common belief that offline capability is a um, highly time-demanding feature, and thus, its benefit doesn't worth the investment. So, I will not argue about uh, the benefit part in this talk, but at least I will try to convince you it is rather cheap to have the offline mode enabled in your apps. So, you may have heard about progressive web apps. These are web applications that leverage the new web and HTML5 APIs and to look and feel like native applications. Nowadays, there is plenty of things the web can do, uh, thanks to new uh, web and HTML5 APIs that was only available before to native applications, such as push notification, offline mode, obviously, uh, handling touch gesture, geolocation, get, getting information uh, about the device, such as the battery. So actually, Progressive web apps um, are an opportunity to rethink how we build the web and learn from native applications. Okay. Let's now focus on how to address the offline mode. So this slide depicts um, common client-server architecture. Applications are querying data from a single and shared data source and use these data tools to persist the information as well. So, when all the clients are online, there is no problem. The data is persisted synchronously. When one or multiple clients goes online, offline, sorry, then you need to think about reconciliate this data and how to replicate it. So, offline applications are like a distributed system, which means you have to take into account data replication and conflict resolution. Thanks to caching mechanism, the application can still display the data. But then, how will users, if they want to, will modify this data? So this is when PouchDB and CouchDB come into play with an out-of-the-box solution. Thanks to uh, CouchDB and PouchDB, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if your app is offline or online. All your app needs to do is to persist the data in the local database, PouchDB, and then PouchDB will take care of synchronizing the data to CouchDB. So if you're online, the data get, it's getting synced within milliseconds, and if you're online, if you're offline, then the data will be synced whenever you recover the network connection. So this is all about the offline first design. First, focus on updating your local database. Then it will get synced anyway. Okay, let's now focus on CouchDB, which will play the role of the master node of the cluster in our scenario. CouchDB is a NoSQL data store distributed under the Apache license. Its main advantage comparing to other NoSQL store is that it supports replication over HTTP with JSON API, which is something very convenient when you are designing progressive web app or web application in general. Actually, CouchDB is more than a simple database. It comes along with a reverse proxy, um, support for authentication, conflict resolution, and many more. 
Actually, um, CouchDB can replace your application server. Please uh, also mind there are different solutions for implementing the CouchDB APIs, uh, such as PouchDB Server, which I will use in my demo, or Couchbase, which has an amazing community of developers providing a support of very good quality. So on the server side, we will have CouchDB. And on the client side, we also have a database that syncs, that syncs over HTTP, which is called PouchDB. PouchDB is an open source uh, JavaScript database inspired directly by CouchDB, designed to run on the client side in the browser. It supports many different browsers and many uh, and various types of device from mobiles to tablets and obviously computers. Actually, Couch, uh, PouchDB is a kind of abstraction layer on top of uh, IndexedDB and WebSQL, which are the real store implementations offered by modern browsers. PouchDB provides a two ways uh, synchronization mechanism with CouchDB so that your PouchDB application acts like any node of the cluster. Finally, uh, the integration of PouchDB with CouchDB is something very easy and fast to implement thanks to a developer's friendly JavaScript APIs provided by the PouchDB library. So, in order to illustrate how Pouch and Couch work together, I've created a progressive web app. Uh, you will be able to consult uh, the source code directly on my GitHub afterwards. And this web app allows users to share images with the user's community with a like features uh, on the image. So this app is built using uh, AngularJS framework. It's synchronizing with CouchDB database. So I've, for the purpose of the demo, uh, I didn't use uh, real CouchDB, I used PouchDB server. And this app is using the cookie-based authentication provided by PouchDB server. So for the purpose of the talk, I have packaged this app using two uh, different methods. The first one is uh, Electron, which is based on the Atom framework. And the second one um, is based on Chrome extension app. Okay, let's now see it live. Um, so first, before showing you the app, um, I will show you what the UI dashboard of PouchDB Server looks like, and especially uh, the user database. So as you can see, I have created um, two different users, Batman and Superman, that I will use, I will use to um, log in through my app. Okay. So on the left hand side, I have my Electron app, and on the right hand side, I have my uh, Chrome extension app. On the Electron app, I will log in as Batman. And on the Chrome extension app, I will log in as Superman. OK. So now this is done. I can display uh, the gallery page. Obviously, it's uh, empty for now. Let's fit it in. Um, Batman is sharing two images. And Superman as well. OK. Um, you see, data is getting synced uh, with uh, on the left-hand side, the Electron app, and on the right-hand side, the Chrome extension app. Um, let's know, obviously, both applications are online, and you have the online-offline indicator on the top of the screen. Now, let's simulate uh, a connection drop on the left application. Um, this user is still able to uh, play with the app while being offline. So, it will use the like feature 
to like images that Superman shared. And it will also add a new image while being offline. Okay, obviously the Chrome app didn't get updated because the o Electron app is offline. Um, I will as well add a new image while being online on my Chrome app. And then I will be back online using my Electron app. And let's see how it works. So all the data that was stored on the left-hand side while being offline in PouchDB is getting automatically synced, thanks to CouchDB, back to the Chrome app. And the like notification are displayed. And the new images that were shared between both applications are automatically synced. OK, so let's go back to the presentation. So uh, to conclude the talk, I have prepared a very basic pro and cons analysis um, of the combination of pouch and couch. So the negative aspects for me, um, it is mainly linked to the default conflict resolution mechanism of um, CouchDB, which is heuristic. And according to me, it's a bit cheap. If you really want to have a production application that use this solution, you'd better write your own conflict resolution mechanism. Hopefully, uh, CouchDB, when, whenever there is a conflict, CouchDB, CouchDB will keep both revision. So you will be able to know and to manage yourself which one uh, should be merged and which one should uh, take the precedence. Second drawback, to according to me, is uh, by default, PouchDB, when it is configured in um, live mode, it uses long polling, which will consume a lot of battery and a lot of traffic if you want to configure it that way. So according to me, if you really want to have a production app running live syncing, you'd better use a sync gateway for that, that will communicate to the clients over a WebSocket. And last but not least, uh, remember CouchDB is a NoSQL data store. It's not a relational database, so it will not fit uh, all the use cases. And the positive parts, so the main advantage is the seamless integration of Pouch and CouchDB. Um, the JavaScript APIs are very, very well designed, and they enable developers really to focus on business code rather than focusing on uh, uh, the integration with layer with the backend system. So, moreover, the combination of the two products provide an out of the box support for authentication, conflict resolution, and so on, um, which is very convenient when uh, implementing progressive web app or web app in general. Um, it provides many features out of the box, but when it needs customization, there is room for customization. You are never blocked with, uh, with this uh, architecture. Um, you can write your own conflict resolution mechanism, which is very, uh, which is a must have uh, because the conflict resolution by default is not really good, not that good. So. Um, to conclude the talk, I would say that uh, this approach is a quick win for uh, offline mode and is very good for uh, progressive web apps and as well for hybrid mobile apps. Okay, That's it. So if you have questions, you can come downstairs. Thank you. <laughs>